remember who it was, but one of my earlier mentors, I remember saying, you know, you can never let your highs be too high and your lows be too low. Feel my words. Feel my words. Not just here. I want people to feel my words. Like a refreshing summer rainfall. Like a hug from my grandma here with a $5 bill. So I decided to do something new. That's right. Right now, at this very moment, I'm creating a poetry album. With the assistance of Creative Space Station, I am melodically releasing my vibration into an industry made for music, but not limited to. And you can too. Yeah, I'm from Raleigh. Okay. Uh, well, I'm from Durham and made it as far as Raleigh. That's what right. I tell everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a big town, so it's it really kind of making it a huge town smaller to right. really connect on a local level with people because as we grow and I'm obviously very pro development and growth right. um, it does make it more and more difficult though to connect with people mm. um, I hadn't thought about that yeah so that's exciting that's, that's interesting to even think about I hadn't thought about it from the sense of because it's growing it makes it harder right. to connect Wow. And and why do you, why do you think that is? Why do you like as is, as a city's growing the size, you know, cuz Raleigh's always kind of been a smaller, you know, now like mid-sized city in the nation. Um why do you think as it's getting bigger it's harder for people to connect? Um just because, you know, people are busy. Uh mm. everybody gets super busy. Yeah. And um you don't necessarily have the same habits that you did mm. um, when you were younger and had more free time right <laughs> so i think that is a lot of the reasons why it makes it harder mm. so then you have to be super intentional about very like that i feel like it's going to be a very important word for 2022 yeah intentional yeah um you know and just really making efforts to do things mm. it's easy to um make plans and you know have high hopes of doing things and then life gets in the way and you're like oh man to, you know that wouldn't be good let's move let's reschedule let's do this and then it gets bumped and bumped and bumped right you know? so be intentional got you have you are, are you a very intentional person i try to be yeah i try, I to, try be. to be have you always been like that um I feel like I've always been a very thoughtful person, okay. if that makes sense. <laughs> right. So um, hopefully that goes hand in hand. Yeah, indeed. Because <laughs> um, I, I know there's there's sometimes where, you know, you'll realize something about yourself that you're not. Right. And then you aspire to that. Um, and, and sometimes there's something that causes those things. But then it, sometimes it's just innate in somebody to, mm -hmm. to be thoughtful. Or yeah. to be intentional, and then some people have to kind of like work on yes. on doing those. That's interesting because I was just having this conversation with someone else. Of you know, it took me a while to realize that um, being able to connect with people, that is a gift. You know, like not everybody can do that naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people have to work harder at it. Right. That's crazy. I, I, there are different it, ways and different mediums to connect and to reach out to people. Yeah, I've never. Well, I had, I've thought about it before, but it's crazy because, like, for me, um, connecting myself with people and interacting with people has always been, like, innate in me. It's always been natural. I, you know, like, growing up, I was uh, in the in crowd with the, the people who played basketball and sports. Mm -hmm. I was also in the in crowd with, you know, just the girls that kind of talk with amongst themselves and then the nerds. The quiet people like I was I could always move in all these different circles but I was never intentional um, about being someone that connected the you know the nerd to the basketball mm -hmm. players like that's something that I did I never did and so now with kind of where I'm at in life I'm like let me be more intentional with that mm -hmm. and I think it's kind of easy for me just because the other part was already natural. Right. So I don't have to work as hard Connection to... Connection piece. Yeah. 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 It does make it a lot easier, Yeah. I think, to connect with people like the day that we met. I mean, like, you know, that was just an awesome event. Just it was. A great, 
you know, kind of connection type thing. Shout out mind, body, and sense. Yes. <laughs> I bought all those candles, right? <laughs> That's right. I've got an order I'll be picking up tomorrow. I heard that. Matter of <laughs> fact, she did tell me she was meeting you tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's just dope. Like you said, it was super, you know, we were all there to support her yeah. and, you know, her having an anniversary for yes. her business. And then next thing you know, you just start talking with people in the room and, you know, and then we we decided to to sit down on, on camera and just kind of have a same kind of conversation but just have it on film for everybody to kind of see so i think that's super dope um because i was never doing that before i was having a conversation and then maybe we have a conversation later right maybe we don't for coffee right yeah. but it wasn't something that where i was like hey let's sit down and and, and have a conversation but for the sake of it being uh for everyone to see for other people to be impacted, to be able to connect different mm -hmm. people to certain things. Um, and like, you know, you're, you're in real estate, obviously. And so it makes sense for someone who needs real estate, whether it's land, whether it's a home, whatever, to be able to connect yes. to you, you yes. know what I'm saying? Um, and so I just think it's dope that I, I kind of have, just within my brand itself, have that built-in connection piece there so it just made it real easy to to kind of put the plug in yeah, definitely yeah. so i always start off and we've already started but i always start <laughs> off my my episodes oh, yeah, like with the only question that i like have pre pre-written and everything um where i ask like who do you think you are well you know i I definitely have it on my profile. I have had it <laughs> on there for probably 12 years now. Oh, wow. I remember when I first got on social media and it was like, basically, who are you kind yep. of thing, like for your bio. And I've tweaked it over the years, but I feel like it's a pretty good representation of me, you know. Um, Christian, mother of four. Mm. Real estate agent extraordinaire. <laughs> I, I heard like it. Sometime gym rat. Okay. I'm on again, off again. Right now, I'm a little off. <laughs> it's the holidays. <laughs> you get a pass, right? Yeah. Love some yoga. Okay. And people fascinate me. Mm. You know? So that's really kind of the are. summary of who I am. Right. right. What about people fascinate you? Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of six, so okay. you know, I came from a big family, and um, I was the nerd. Okay. The bookworm. Um, you know, back in school when you would have those contests uh, where you did the little caterpillar, and you got a circle for every book you read, right. and I was like the one all the way around the room, you yeah. know, because I loved reading. Wow. Um, and so just as I got older, what I started reading Changed. changed and it was always just about people and wow. you know I just loved reading other people's stories and um, then when I started meeting people you know the first thing it was like you know where are you from how did you get here right because um, we are in an area where I am kind of a rare breed now because I'm actually from North Carolina and right. I'm from Durham um, you know not many people that are yeah. actually here from here right yeah right so I get to say you know how did you get here yeah. and um, I love hearing all those stories mm. so you know it's cool and I get to meet so many people and you know I think what I do is you know, very impactful um, when people whether it's uh, you know opening a new business and they're you know looking for their first commercial space or they're looking for a home. Right. You know, it's very, it's a very impactful part of their life. Yeah. So, you know, I'm excited that I get to be a part of that and be the, you know, person that they can trust and know that I'm going to help guide them through that. Right. And so, you know, it's really, it's exciting for me. Have you, so pre-real estate, right, were you making an impact um, that you felt like was kind of up to snuff of how you wanted to make an impact in this world? I think I was on the right path. Yeah. Um, so it started, um, 
I mean, if we go way back, I was in uh, Not that far back. <laughs> I mean, I was in finance. Right. And so I was the person with the numbers and, mm. um, you know, helping with HR type stuff. And I was perfectly happy with that, you know, from my bookworm days, right. numbers and things matching up to the penny worked out very well right. um, for me. And it was a girl that I work with. She just, she left our company and went to work for another company. And she was like, you got to come mm. interview here. And um, so I got my first like sales role. And I mean, they just, I guess, saw something in me that I had never expected mm. and um, started recruiting and it was interesting because I was helping people find jobs okay so you know again a very emotional impactful decision True. in people's lives so I kind of looked at it as I went from matching people you know to jobs they love to homes they love wow. um, so it kind of was a good a good segue into that, huh. I think. So you, so you, know. you were definitely on, on that that impact path. Yeah. That's um, that's crazy because a lot of people who, so like I look at myself, um, I feel like I'm making a lot more impact now mm -hmm. than five years ago, right? But five years ago, I wasn't on that path oh, to I the impact. It was yeah, so it was, it was like a, a complete like you know, 180 about face versus what you're saying is like, yeah, I was, I was, you know, moving along and now I'm just at a higher level um, or making more impact than what I was making before. Huh. And so you say you have four kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of which I've met. And he yes. is, is he the oldest or no? He's the youngest. He's the youngest. He's the youngest. Got yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. So he is, uh, you know, a very, he was a big surprise <laughs> and um, just an amazing gift because right. he has brought a lot of energy and excitement yeah. into the family. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, and he is just keeps the button. So, you know, it's hard because he's so cute. <laughs> right. Um, but yes, he is six and right. um, my daughter is 16. Okay. And then my middle son is 19 and my oldest is 22. Got you. And so it's, you know, they're starting to get out there and kind of make their mark and right, the figure world. out who they are. Yeah. Uh, my oldest is in Arizona and he is uh, doing, uh, learning kind of the behind the scenes of the music industry. He'd love okay. to open his own studio someday. That's dope. And he's already like recording and, you know, his apartment basically looks like a recording studio right. now. As it know? should. Like, he has one whole entire wall just covered with albums like old vinyl albums wow, that's so, dope. yeah it's pretty cool and um you know my middle son he's just in college now okay. so yeah he's got a couple of years to try and figure things out come on yeah oh i'm sorry baby i don't mean to be rude yeah. I'm just a little different from all these dudes. Okay, 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 they riding waves. Me, I'm up on the cruise. Yeah, yeah. You feel like me, then you got nothing to prove. Uh, uh. I see him trying, trying to do what I do. Yeah, yeah. Even my dagger couldn't move like a moon. Yeah, yeah. You think you're how it look? I'm up on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Fresh to death and it came out of the tomb. That's cause I, I, I got a different type of gratitude. Don't be sour, got my power from the Beatitudes. And we did it the long way. Check out the latitude. I'm unapologetic. Energetically fly, I don't wonder why, that's just my attitude. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's just my attitude. Oh, yeah, I don't blame you if I was you, I'd probably be getting mad at too. All right, so you've been on, on your impact path. That's what we're gonna call it, your impact path for, for a while now. What did that look like as it translated over to being a mom? Because obviously, as a parent, you wanna make you know, a huge impact, if not the biggest impact, with, with your own kids. And so being on a path where you were helping people you know, to find jobs, and then that 
you know, graduated into you helping people find properties. Um, what did that look like as a mom uh, with your kids? Did you feel like you were making the same amount or more impact there? Or it was tough. Tough? Yeah, definitely yeah. tough, I think. Um, you know, the the more successful you are, the more demands that you have. Yeah. And um, I feel like there was a lot of demands that were put on me um, as a single mother um, that were definitely very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, you know, it was hard to kind of get through those and I probably didn't make the best decisions at all times, but we None got through do. it and we <laughs> survived it. And, um, you know, I hope that they learned um, just from, you know, watching me go through kind of basically starting over a career. Right. Because they're, you know, certainly old enough to remember when I got into residential real estate and the changes that that took on our life and how kind of the new normal, what a, that started looking like. Yeah. And then even more recently with starting the company and just with where things are. And, um, you know, so they're, they're a big part of everything that I do. And I do hope and pray that, that they're learning, yeah. you know, from example. Um, it's easy to say, do this, do that. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, you really got to lead by example. Yeah, so. I, th I think it's important for, to have that example in your home. Like, mm -hmm. even though a lot of times, of course, you take, you take the things closest to you, the people closest to you. Mm -hmm you know, for granted in some instances when it comes to that. But I think, um, like I'm a big basketball fan. I watch and play basketball. And so I look at like Steph Curry and he just broke the NBA's three point record. He has made the most three pointers in NBA history. And so, you know, of course now they're showing all these videos and things of the nature with his dad who was in the NBA, Dale Curry. Um, and they're showing when Steph was a kid Oh, wow. And him shooting on the play school basketball goal and his dad like, okay, we got to make your first shot, you know, but he had that example at home. Right. And so I think that, you know, I don't know your kids, <laughs> um, but at the same time, I feel like that's, that's important. And I feel like as they continue to grow and mature and understand their past even more, that, that if it's already not, it'll shine in even more just because that was at home. Yeah. Um, so you said that recently you started uh, a company, correct? Yes. yes. And so the name of your company is? M Squared Realty. M Squared And so that's the emblem that's on the back, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We had to make sure we had that in the shot. Um, so how many years were you in real estate before you actually started M Squared Realty? So again, it depends, like, you know, do we want to go way back? Because I actually, in high school, as a senior in high school, I'm a November baby, so my birthday is late, and a senior in high school, uh, the counselor came and talked to us and said, you um, only have to be 18 to apply for and get your real estate license and go to the real estate school. Hmm. So I actually went through real estate school in, in high school. school as I was a senior in high school. Wow. But as the story goes, I ended up not even taking the fi the state exam. So I took it through the class exam and then didn't take the state exam. Um, but, you know, it was very instrumental when I went to buy my first house. So, you know, I really liked that. And then it wasn't until 2011 I got my license because prior to that, when I stepped back into real estate was really through the family business. My ex-husband was a commercial real estate developer, okay. and um, he had started his company, I believe it was about a year or two before we had met, and so, you know, that kind of became my business. We, When we were on our honeymoon, we kind of talked about, like, me stepping away from what I was doing, which was the recruiting at the time, okay. and, you know, taking a more serious role in with that sort of thing. So that was the next step into it. Gotcha. And then it was 2011 when I actually got licensed. Gotcha. And because that was when I was going to go into residential real estate, which was awesome. I learned a lot with residential real estate too. So, right. Yeah, so so what? So what made you veer more toward commercial versus residential? Was it? Is it the money? 
So really, the money is uh, definitely, when you look at it um, transactionally wise, it seems like a lot difference, but the timeline of how long it takes for some of these deals to happen certainly stretches out. And when you right. look at it that way, you know, it's really kind of evens out. It kind of evens will. out, really. <laughs> right. So, you know, for me, it was a natural segue into that because it fit more with the lifestyle of single mm. mother of, you know, working more in commercial areas um, so that the hours could be more during the day. Gotcha. Uh, which was really good. But then when COVID happened and um, everything just kind of sort of went crazy, uh, I had clients calling me from residential days that were, you know, asking me to help them help sell their house. And so that's when it kind of was like, well, you know, that was in the long range plan. So right. you know, let's go ahead and add that into the, the what we what we offer now, too. And um, then, you know, things just kind of grew from there. And um then agents started coming on board and hanging their license and really kind of helping to grow the company. So gotcha. yeah, it's exciting. So I'm curious because, and I just thought that I, I don't even know the answer to this question. What did COVID do to the real estate industry? Well, you know, obviously it put a big um, strain on inventory because people were so unsure of what was happening with the world and what was happening with their job and right. uh, their family and things like that. So not a lot of people were putting their house on the market. And So that's where know, the inventory drop yeah. came from. So people were just kind of like, well, what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to sell now, you know, let's right. wait. And so there was a big inventory shortage from that. And obviously that just kind of snowballed into where we are today with, um, you know, more people moving here than we have homes being built. And so, you know. Mm. And then that just raises the, the demand price yes, on demand, everything. Demand. I mean, it's definitely yeah. very, very evident in the real estate market. So the numbers for November just came out and, you know, the median sales price went up again. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's definitely real estate is a good investment. Right. <laughs> Do you think definitely that's going to level out for that? <laughs> Do you think that's going to level out anytime soon? Well, you know, uh, a lot of different thoughts and theories on that. But yeah. um, the way I see it is, you know, there's more companies moving here than right. moving out of here. True. Um, we have, I think on average, it was 80 some people a day moving into White County. Sheesh. Um, so, you know, where are they going to live? Right. So, you know, housing is definitely not going to fizzle out. Right. Um, it's just a matter of can we keep up with it and get it back to where it's a more balanced market where, right. you know, it's not such a strain on, um, you know, first time home buyers and people yeah. being able to afford to, to purchase. Hmm. That's crazy how, like, just, and I mean, COVID was, you know, a global thing. Um, but it's crazy how a, a virus or a disease, um, in right. some instances, can have some an effect on something that it doesn't seem like it should have an effect on. Um, yeah, I mean, who knew, right? Yeah. But when people, uh, when I had a friend call and she had, I had helped her buy her house and she called and it was in April of 2020. And at that point, everybody was still in lockdown. Right. So, you know, she said how she had just recently got engaged and mm. he already had a house and they were looking to buy a house at the beach. So they were like, you know, we don't need my house. So um, we talked about potentially renting it. They didn't want to do that. So we said, yeah, let, you know, let's go ahead and put it on the market. And um, I said, you know, you do realize that nobody can come out of their house to come see yours, but. I'll get it sold for you. Right. <laughs> you know, so there was still a lot of unknowns at that point. And so I did my first virtual, virtual. showing um, and did a Facebook Live open house wow. where I basically just went on to my Facebook and I had a video that I worked with Kevin, my brother actually, at okay. Flying Ace Films. Okay. And he helped me produce a video of basically walking through the house. So we had that. And then I actually did walk through the house. Um, I think we got that one under contract. It might have, that was again very early on, but I think maybe it was definitely less than two weeks. I'm trying to think if it was less than one week mm. when we got it under contract, but you know, still very quickly right. 
after going on the market, we were able to get that sold in a global mm. pandemic. How how so. um was that was that shift transition tough for you? Just as um, you're saying, okay, I'm used to having people come in the house. Da da da. Now yeah. I need to have somebody film. We need to do it this way. Well, like was that like crazy brain or I think again having a family member in the industry that was a pretty smooth transition mm. um, for him being able to just immediately go into action and um, right. do video uh, plus I also still have a photographer that I work with that you know I got the still shots right um, and just really presented it in the best light possible so gotcha yeah, it was Working Pretty. together, team effort. Right. And so, yeah, because I can imagine, like, I know there was a lot of people in a lot of different industries where when they had to completely change everything, you know, like restaurants, yeah, yes. they might have had yeah. curbside service or to-go service, but then mm -hmm. everything, you know, right. had to turn into that, and then they had to figure out Uber Eats and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Kind of forced. Well, you know, I really liked that the QR codes became very popular because yeah. I've used that in marketing for a, a lot of years. Right. <laughs> um, and a lot of people were like, no, what is this? And now, and now, <laughs> and now everybody yeah, knows. Because so that's what the menus are. <laughs> yes. So, you know, that way it was, I felt like it technically helped things um, to really be able to market and get out there more yeah. um, to draw people in to right. kind of. Tell them, hey, this is what we do, and this is how we can help you. How long have you been using QR codes? I would say, for sure, I remember in 2009. Sheesh. Yeah. So 2009, that's, that's for sure. That's crazy. I don't even... On brochures, like real estate brochures. I don't even know if I knew what a QR code... I don't even know if I had heard the term QR code in 2009. And so I'm thinking, you know, over the last... And, and I knew about them before COVID... But of course, they really became popular. Yes. But um, man, 2009. How how were you? So with your marketing for the things that you do, how do you stay ahead of the curve? Well, again, having family in the business, networking with other people who are also into marketing, right. and um, staying ahead of the curve. I think there's a lot to be said of who you surround yourself with. Mm. Um, so that's uh, very important. Um, but just really just personal research, yeah. um, opening emails, <laughs> right. reading things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, a big, it makes it easier for me because of my realtor association membership. So right. um, that is something that agents on the on, in the company are required to join the Raleigh Regional Association of Realtors. Okay. And there's an annual dues membership with that as well as like quarterly dues right. to help us where we can list our homes and search the database so we get the information hot and fresh as soon as it happens mm. we get we get the notification right. Um, but along with that dues membership they, they really partner with some of the best in the industry to give us cutting edge tools Mm. And to really help us to be, you know, ahead of things and right. on top of things. So a lot of times that is how I find uh, the different partners to match up with to help get things done is through, you know, my membership dues. That's crazy. I know uh, yeah, me and one of my friends are talking uh, just yesterday, actually, mm -hmm. and he does, like, no email. Like, he doesn't check emails. He doesn't have... I'm like, yo, you have to figure out some sort of system or whatever where you can interact with clients or potential clients, mm -hmm. but also get information that you're actually checking through your email. I'm like, because a lot of people, they live out of a calendar um, and they send emails that they expect people to, to kind of open and, and get information from. Um, so I can definitely agree with you there. Uh, like, you know, I've sent you a couple articles and stuff that like I'm always reading and looking for stuff, seeing what's happening, what's going on and, and where. So I, I definitely, you know, agree with that. I'm just kind of mind blown though. Like even something now as simple as a QR code right. that you were using in 2009. <laughs> God, I can only imagine like being like, hey, look, so I want you to scan this. And they're like, what? Do what? We used it in marketing um, 
print marketing as well as um, like on the sign writers, okay. but people weren't really, you know, yeah. pulling over their car and scanning right. their phones. <laughs> um, but we were definitely using it and putting it out there. So it mm. was really nice when it started becoming very obvious. Like, did you, oh, that's what that is. Did you, oh, here's how I open it. Did you think it was going to become obvious or were you like, okay, this is just something I'm using? That was a total surprise with mm. that being how everybody became, you know, how you would read anything, print material, just kind of right. stalled for a moment. Mm. So what makes you stick to, and, I, and we're just talking about QR codes, but just any sort of technology that is there but people aren't using it. What makes you stick with it for that long? Well, I do think that, you know, you mean as far as like continuing to use the yeah. QR codes, I think that there were times where I was just out of habit putting them on the brochures, mm. uh, but not expecting it to really generate anything where people were like, oh, wow, thanks for putting that QR code on there. You know, it took me right to the video. Mm. You know, so I wasn't getting that kind of feedback on there. It was just, it was just on the brochure. Right. Um, it was just right there. It had its placeholder. So there were years where it was just there. Just there. Um, but now I do get that feedback, and you know, people that come in to us through a QR code where they've scanned something and and then opted in. So yeah, you know, I'm really thankful that that one. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Whether I let you know stood stuck with it or it just kind of yeah organically happened, it just. Yeah, I know Thankfully. I use I use QR codes for um, like you know I do my shows and everything, and so when I have people go on the text list sometimes um, for for marketing and promotional purposes, I'll pull up a QR code, they scan it, and then all I gotta do is hit send, and they're good to go. And it's funny because people be like, "Oh, you you fancy," <laughs> or you know, or they'll say, "Yo, like that was quick and, and painless." Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you know when you're trying to promote something to somebody. They're like, oh my God, how long am I going to be here? And I'm like, nah, just scan the QR code. All right, cool, yeah, you, you'll get the updates. And they're like, oh, like, thanks for that. Um, whereas before, you know what I'm saying, before the pandemic, it was like, I got to do what? I got to pull up my phone, pull up my camera, do all this stuff. So it's amazing how, again, you know, uh, something, a pandemic, a virus, just changed and shifts an entire uh type of technology in many different mm -hmm. industries at one time. Mindset of just yeah. a whole bunch of people. And it's crazy because, you know, we, you know, we do conferences, we have seminars, things of that nature, and a lot of them are geared toward mindset. Like, that's one of the hardest things it seems to get people to change is their mindset about mm -hmm. success or about how to do business or whatever the case may be. But then we look at something like as simple as a QR code and something happens and then mindset has changed like instantly. Like why do you, what would you attribute that to or what do you think it is that we're not tapping into when we're trying to do these presentations and conferences to get people to change mindset that something in the world happens mm -hmm. and mindset changes on a dime? <laughs> listen, I was, listen, I wish I knew too. Because it, it, there's something, right? Yeah. Um, and if we could, like, if we could figure that out. Just tap into it just a little bit. And say, hey, this is all it needs. And, you know, and, then we could, and then you could shift someone's mindset that fast. Mm -hmm. Then that would be, that would be powerful yeah. um, in marketing. But it seems like it doesn't happen that much in marketing. It's more of a a social kind of shift that happens and then all well, of a sudden, if, if boom. You, if you look at social media even, you know, just initially, I mean, it's been around for a very long time. Long time. Yeah. But when did it become basically an ad platform mm. to, to, you know, people being able to promote themselves free or paid on, you know, these different platforms that people go on to every day. So, right. you know, They've been around for a really long time, but it's more gradual yeah. with that. Whereas some things like, um, you know, what is it? The necessity is the mother of invention. You know, people had to figure out how can we get them a, a menu that they can look at without touching, you know, everything. Sure. Or, you know, so just had to adapt. 
Mm. So we just need to figure out how to make something a necessity. Mm, there you go. And then, yeah. then you're good to go. Yeah. That's a nugget. I need to, I need to explore that. Well, and on a broad level, right? You know, it was everybody had to. True. You know, so um, I think that's why it's important to have networking and partnering up with people so that when something is working, you can share it with your community and everybody starts doing it on a bigger level. Yeah. It makes more of an impact that way. True. Yeah, I got, I got some things now that I'm going to sit down and kind of... <laughs> tweak and see like how can I make this a necessity or as much of a necessity as possible yeah. so that people are way more apt to to gear themselves toward actually doing whatever it is I want them to do or seeing or hearing things in a different way than they've ever seen or heard it before yeah. um, that's super I mean that's because that's business you know trying to figure out how people how people yeah, think mindset. yeah um staying on the technology bit i know we were talking about like the metaverse right yes um and i know i've i've read and listened to a bunch of stuff even since we met like about what's happening in the metaverse with mm -hmm. all this land being sold for 20 million dollars and five million dollars and i'm like like what and then snoop dogg yes you can pay to be people's neighbors <laughs> And, and, you know, and first thought, I'm like, yo, that's stupid. But then I'm like, but it's not. Like, that's what we do anyway, like in yeah. real life. Mm -hmm. Because if, you know, if somebody had the money and they could pay to be Snoop Dogg's neighbor and they love to smoke weed all the time, then they would pay to be they Snoop Dogg's do neighbor. Yeah. And so if you can do that in the metaverse, then you're attaching yourself to something. So when did you, um, what are your thoughts on just the metaverse itself? And then when you start thinking about the metaverse and what real estate looks like, like what are you thinking in, I don't know, the next two to five years, where are you thinking that you may be and what you may be doing as far as the metaverse goes when it links into real estate? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> obviously, I feel like the sky's the limit. Right. Um, but I do think that it's a very real thing that um, more and more people are going to start, um, you know, using. And my 16-year-old daughter, you know, she's definitely very into gaming and um, right. playing with, you know, virtual games, so yeah. to speak, like that. Um, so she wants the, the, the headset, the VR headset yeah. and everything for Christmas. That's actually very high on her list. So, you know, I know that it's very real that the younger generation, that's going to become something that, not sure how many years in the future, but, um, you know, it's going to be very common. Yeah. You know, just like everybody pretty much has a phone in their hands now. Yeah. Whereas it used to be like, you're a doctor, you had a phone. Right. You know. Um, in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. the car phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or if you were in sales. You, you were, they were right. always probably cutting edge too with that. Um, but, you know, I think that, I, I think it makes sense to look into things like that, invest yeah. in as you can allow. Um, you know, you don't want to over budget yourself by investing in something that is, you know, yeah. still a, a lot of unknowns yeah. and variables and that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm certainly not someone who recommends like big risk taking and things like that. But as far as what my thoughts are, you know, certainly we'll look into that and, um, you know, invest as we can into that technology and that and see right. if that's a way to, even if it's on more of a marketing level of, yeah. you know, really people still are going to have a need to have a place to live. IRL, <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, so, you know, if it's a way to brand and market yourself in the metaverse, yeah. um, virtually to get the clients in real life, you know, I certainly am open to that. That's going to be dope. I'm, I'm, and when we met and after we talked and I was like doing more research about mm -hmm. it, cause I, I had, you know, I, my show, um, we streamed in VR for the first time. Um, and so that was dope to have that and 
not a lot of people took advantage of because not a lot of people have the headsets, but it was also right. in 360. So a lot of people were even experiencing 360 technology for the first time. Like, how do I see the stage? Yeah. And then the guy's like, hey, you take, you know, you your finger on your phone or your mouse or whatever. People was like, oh my God, like, this is cool. And so for me, I've been, I've known about 360, I have a 360 camera, things of that nature for a while. And so I'm like, okay, I can use my platform to expand people's knowledge of certain technologies, right? Mm -hmm. So then when we met and we we're just talking about real estate and all that stuff, I'm like, man, like, I think people are gonna be selling real estate in the metaverse. Yeah, for and sure. unbeknownst to me at the time, um, and then when I went and looked it up, yeah, it was already happening. Like, people have been making millions of dollars off of it for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, man. So I'm like, I really don't wanna sell real estate, like, in the regular world. But now I want to still sell real estate in the metaverse, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, what? But um, I'm, I'm going to form and I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to form a company. Um, and actually, I may call it IRL. I'm going to see if that's taken. I like it. IRL. And it's going to be for the metaverse. And it'll be so dope. Like, if we're looking back 10 years from now mm -hmm. and we've just made all these people happy, have all these homes and land and all that stuff, and we're like partnering on some things just from, you know, standing in the middle of Crabtree Mall at an event. I, that'd be that'd be nuts. Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah, it would be. Well, you know, I I think the sky's the limit on everything. It's really just, you know, what do you want to invest your time, energy and yeah. resources into? What did that have you always had that that sky's the limit mentality? Um, you know, I think so. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember ever feeling like, I remember feeling like, you know, things were really big and like mm. not being qualified for it, but knowing I wanted to do it anyway and right. learn, you know, I think that um, my mom, her favorite saying or one of my favorite sayings from my mom is, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm. You know, you just know that um, you can do anything you want. Right. You work hard and do it. You can you can do it. Yeah. You just got to do it. I remember so. a guy said one time I was at a conference and he was like you can do anything. You know, you can do everything. You just can't do everything all at once. Yeah. Yeah, same kind of kind of mindset. Um and I I'm asking you that question. I'm asking myself that question. I feel like I've always kind of felt like that too. Um mm -hmm. that I could do whatever I want, but I, I think that was instilled in me by teachers and yeah. um, family members, things of that nature. And so it's crazy because I wonder, like, if I had had the opposite, would I have been like, nah, I don't have to listen to what they say. I can, I still believe in me. Or right. would I be like some adults who as kids were told they weren't going to be anything, they weren't valued, and now they feel like they're not worth anything, they're not valued. Yeah. Um, so environment and being brought up a certain way and having those examples um, definitely has been important for me and I think it is for, for a lot of people. Um, currently with your company, because your company is like young still, right? Yes, yes um, But flourishing and, and growing, do you see yourself doing right now anything outside of the real estate sector? Like, do you have any other passions that you really want to like dive into? Um, you mean as in career wise or just career wise or, you know, or maybe on a smaller scale, like, yo, I, I've always wanted to sell bananas and, you know, <laughs> in, in Nevada or something and have a banana stand uh, yeah. like, um, not anything in the near future, um, you know, long-term goals yet, definitely. Like what? Uh, retire somewhere with some sand and mm. salt water. So you're a beach Just, girl. I mean, I definitely like the mountains too, okay. but um, for sure, I don't like to be cold, so I'm gonna prefer sun over snow. <laughs> gotcha, sun over snow, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but you know, someday that would be nice to have the real estate in a different location as well gotcha. so certainly plans to grow um you know long rain plans would love to be in other states right. and other areas within the state too got you so. 
I know all businesses are different and I know like me being in events um, and entertainment, I kind of go like no more than like I forecast them two years out at the most mm -hmm. typically. Um, with a commercial real estate business, like how, how far from a business aspect do you kind of forecast certain things out with the business? Although, of course, there's things change all like the time. I feel like it's very much so changing all the time. Yeah. Um, just because there are a lot of things that, you know, you get to a certain point where it may not go through. Um, so it's reassessing yeah. constantly. And, um, you know, also trying to plan ahead for forecasting things out for, um, you know, budgeting purposes and things like that, you know, right. really trying to figure out where is the best um, way to use the resources for the marketing and different right. things like that and trying to figure out, because sometimes you have to lock into a contract for certain marketing efforts or right. different things like that. So, you know, it's really kind of trying to figure out what's the next thing, you know, when what did we learn from this one? Are we going to continue on the same scale, a different scale? Right. Um, and then where are we going to go from here? Right. Um, How, so I know, you know, you said it takes a, a lot longer for commercial real estate to, you know, a deal to go all the way through. Everybody's happy, have they build in, everybody has their money. Um, what makes that process so much longer? Well, um, really, it depends. Um, but if you're talking about like just a land transaction, okay. that typically is going to take longer because of the amount of reports and studies and analytics mm. that need to go into of, you know, is this going to be profitable? Um, so, you know, you really, there's, there's differences when you're working with investors versus someone who's just going to buy a land and hold on to it. Okay. Um, you know, they don't care if, you know, you could never even build a shed on it. They're just going <laughs> to hold on to it. Right. Versus an investor who is going to look into purchasing it. Um, what can we do on it? And what's the return going to be? And how long is it going to take? And forecasting out things like that. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, Hmm. And those variables change. You ha might have one meeting where, you know, the planning has just said something that you weren't thinking of or weren't aware of or just got changed or something. And so you're kind of like, okay, now we've changed from reset. there. Like yeah. reset. And now, you know, all, all the models change and everything starts kind of shifting and going into a different direction. But, you know, ideally you just go with it and that's how things happen because you just keep doing the, you know, whatever you need to and changing right. where you need to and going through the process until you get to the closing table. Man. There's a lot of different adversities to kind of overcome sometimes. Right. I can imagine. I'm like, man, like just thinking about all those different things that go into that, those ingredients that have to mm -hmm. be right at certain points to even yeah. get to the final closing table where it's like, okay, deal's done, we're good to go. Um, from a business aspect, and obviously you're taking calculated risk, um, but how does that play for you mentally? Like, is that a fun game? Um, I think it can be. I think yeah. that that's part of it. You know, I really do love what I do, and, um, you know, I really enjoy the, the, ever-changing part of it yeah um you know it's never a dull moment not, um, it's not monotonous is, at all yeah, definitely <laughs> not um so you know i do think that i kind of probably enjoy that part of it mm. um it is nice though when everything goes smoothly and right. things just happen um and our slogan is believe in miracles and um mm. you know that's because i feel like in what i do i do get to witness you know miracles happening through process on the commercial and the residential side, just right. different things that happen where you're like, wow, you know, that's really cool how right. it all worked out. Sheesh. You know? I can, and, and I'm trying to imagine it just in a real estate world. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably like thinking too hard because even in events, a million things go wrong, oh, wow, yeah. but then it all winds up coming together. Mm -hmm. 
and a great show and everybody has a great time. Right. And the memories are just off the charts. Right. <laughs> so I can man, and so you just do that over and over and over and it's and it's not boring because oh, yeah. you never know what's gonna happen. Like you say, you walk into a meeting mm -hmm. and then everything just changed. Yeah. Um in the times where you walk into a meeting and then they say, hey, look, we're pulling out, right? Yeah. What is, because then you have a couple of different things. You can just say, man, that sucks. All right, on to the next. Or it's like, man, that sucks and that's going to stay for a while. Are you a dweller in those moments? Mm. I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Mm. I do think that I shift pretty quickly. Um, I don't remember who it was, but one of my earlier mentors, I remember saying, you know, you can never let your highs be too high and your lows be too low. You've just got to kind of cruise right there in the middle yeah. of like, yay, that was good. Now let's keep going, you know, or yeah. oh, that stinks. Let's right. you know, keep going. Yeah. Did you to address it and acknowledge it? But, you know, you just can't, like you said, dwell on it. Right. When you and you're, and I'm going back to like young teenage days. Um, where did you where did you learn that at? Or was that something that you didn't? Was that something that you realized like yo, I've always kind of been like that? Or was there something that a parent or a situation that kind of molded you into like, okay, yeah, I just missed that shot, but yeah, I next don't shot. Know. That one, I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> Got you. I don't know where that one would have come from. Right, but you just know it's in there, so you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. What's something about yourself that you're working on changing? Something that you was like, uh, I could be, I could be better at that. So I'm, I'm. Anybody who knows me, I know this that uh, just my time management or structure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which it would be, whether it's schedule, structure, time management. Um, it's something that I think that I've struggled with, but I've also felt like it was a benefit, mm. a benefit and a curse. Because what happens is when you can connect with people and, you know, you've planned out your day and you know you're going to, you know, do this, this and this, but then you're at a meeting and it totally shifted from, you know, you thought you were there to talk about real estate, but um, something's happening on a personal level that they right. just open up and share with you. And I'm just not the kind of person that can say, you know what, I got it. I got to <laughs> I gotta go. I, I, I got to run. <laughs> right. But I'm really sorry to hear that. Right. You know, that's just not how I work. So I think that that's why I think it's like a benefit and a curse because it's part of how I do connect with people. Right. is being present in that moment and being there with them as opposed to I'm already thinking 10 steps ahead. Right. I am the first to admit that, you know, um, a meeting might run over and I've totally forgotten that somebody else is coming. Yeah. And, you know, they step in and I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Right. You know, so um, that is something that I am working on with just, you know, really trying to be more structured without losing who I am, which is the, you know, caring about people. Yeah. 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 You seem, um, just from speaking with you, like, like you are like a people's, the definition of like a people's person in the sense that you care about people and you also care about what people are thinking and how they're thinking, um, which then helps you make that impact when you're, you know, whether it's a residential, whether it's commercial, whether before that, you know, um, uh, helping with the recruiting, things of that nature, mm -hmm. things that are personal to people, it seems like, like really fuels your thought processes, mm -hmm. your business, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it doesn't feel like work to me. I think that that's the main thing is, yeah. you know, what I do as, as much as I, you know, have problems and there's always issues right. and everything. It just, it never feels like work and drudgery and, you know, like, oh, I have yeah. to do that, you know. Yeah. I get to do this for a living, which is amazing. <laughs> it's I'm, pretty mind-blowing. I'm running across a lot of people lately that have that mindset. Yeah. They're like, yo, like, 
this this what I do isn't work I, and I love to do it and that's why I do it versus I do you know this particular thing but I'd rather be doing something else or I'm not really in love with it. I'm still trying to find what I'm passionate about so it's always uh, interesting to watch the people that love what they do versus the people that either don't or just like eh, it's okay mm -hmm. and and look at how their lives are yeah. in comparison um to how they want their lives to be right um and it is awesome when you can connect with people that actually love and have this passion that you have for you know similar things so yeah. like with with the company and um, with having agents come alongside that we really get to partner with them on their real estate journey right. of, you know, really mentoring them if they're newer agents or just helping them if they've, you know, been doing the same thing over and over again and they're just wanting to change and be more right. technically savvy and things like that. Um, you know, just really partnering with them and getting to be alongside them on their journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty especially once yeah. they reach certain uh certain goals and certain aspirations mm -hmm. then you're like yo like we were a part of that process and then they remember that too yeah they remember that and they're you know a lot of times people are grateful mm -hmm. um and then sometimes that stuff comes back around in a positive mm -hmm. way as well yeah. um what's something in real estate uh, a characteristic uh, a thing what, whatever it is that you think should carry over into real life that people could use? Mm. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably maybe never judge a book by its cover kind mm. of thing um, because I think you get that in real estate specifically I'm thinking houses so right. residential you know you never judge a book by its cover it's something I tell clients a lot of you know don't cross it out just because you hate the pictures or don't cross it out just because you hate the way it looks on the outside you know mm. let's go in and step into it you know and on the flip side of that is just even with people as well you know I meet strangers for a living that's kind of <laughs> you know I feel like that's a big part of what right. I do right and um, so, you know, I'll maybe make the connection on a phone call or an email or a text and it's, hey, can, you know, let's get together and talk about real estate. So, you know, sometimes you never know who's going to walk in the door. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I never judge a book by its cover and, you know, it never to me would I compare and think that I know, oh, yeah, what that person's going to be looking for just because of what they walk in the door looking like you know that makes so sense. I think that that if that more people could kind of approach life that way yeah. <laughs> um, and houses and <laughs> <laughs> she said and houses right because that makes your job a whole lot easier right yes yes <laughs> well you know I, because I've been doing it for so long I can see you know really a, something that some people maybe can't see when you walk right. into a house and um, I had an appointment this week actually where, you know, somebody had not lived in the house for 15 years, oh, wow. um, but their partner had, and so now they had to go through everything and, you know, you walk in there and one person would think, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Cause you're stepping over boxes and discarded things of, you know, just someone lived there and, yeah. and you're just kind of in their space and everything. And I can kind of see like, well, once all of this is gone and the carpet's replaced yeah. and the paint and, you know, you could do this and you could do that, like, it can be amazing, you know, right. and someone not realize what they're walking in to see. And mm. I get that a lot because, you know, there's a lot of investors that I work with and they call and they're like, you know, come take a look at this and what do you think? Should I, you know, what should I offer? And right. so, you know, it's easy for me to kind of see that. Right. Um, but I think sometimes it's harder for other people to see that, yeah. not only with houses, but, but with people, people too. Mm, that's good. So tell me about this, because I see you, I, I've never been on a full page on a magazine oh. before. <laughs> well, that was exciting. Um, you know, again, I think a lot of that had to do with networking and connections. And um, 
the publisher of the magazine, we were connected through a mutual friend, okay. and he came out and kind of met with us in a space similar to this downtown, right. and just kind of asked questions about who we are and our culture, and you know, kind of what what were our plans and stuff. And they um, featured us in the article of I think it was the Teams of the Month. Okay, and what magazine is um, this? And this is the Real Producers magazine, okay. which goes out to other realtors in the area. Um, and you can, uh, vendors pay to be in there as far as like to market their services, gotcha. different vendors that we as an industry work with. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a big honor to be included in that because we obviously don't have to pay for that. So right. they come to us and they, they feature us. So it's, it's a big deal. And, you know, obviously we have goals to be on the cover someday. Right. Um, but, you know, we've just got to put up the numbers, yeah. um, which we are. And um, for us to be kind of a baby company, we've done a lot. That's dope. Um, and so that was pretty cool. They did do a little four-page article there. Oh, it was pretty nice. That's, that's so, dope. Um, yeah. And then this is our locals guide okay. that um, I just kind of early on, um, I meet with investors um, that are from out of state, um, plus other clients that are coming in, and they just don't know this area. And since I've been here, my whole life, right. I do know a lot about the area, and you know, I never confess to know everything because it changes so much. But I do like to stay up to date on as much as I possibly can. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I just kind of put together this as like, hey, if I wasn't from this area, these are some places I would want to check out. Right. Um, and so, just kind of put together that list, and it was just really well received of different businesses. The people that I featured on there. Um, they were more than happy to let me leave kind of material for them right. um, and were surprised that I wasn't charging them. But I was like, you know, no, I want to help direct Pour people in. to you. Yeah. I mean, you know, I love coming here or visiting here or whatever right. it is. And so I'm happy to recommend that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's been something that I think has been very impactful with, like I said, us connecting with the community. And then again, with that combined with this new um, service that we've partnered with to really get out there and do these interviews and right. promote other people on a platform to to connect people with. I think that'll just kind of go hand in hand of, Indeed. you know, we can feature the business and the handout because we give this to all of the clients that come in from out of town okay. or even if they've been here for a while. Um, we give that and then also there's other partners that we have with, we give it to them and so when people come in from out of town, they give it to them gotcha um so you know it really kind of helps get the word out there yeah. and we feature people from you know anger to okay. um raleigh all around the triangle so gotcha. multiple different spots and locations gotcha that's dope that's dope yeah. and i know Super like um it, it makes me think of um indie weekly magazine yeah. you know they do a lot of things like that where they let you know what's yeah. going on in the area and so if you're not from here, you could pick up an Indie Weekly right. and you could have a plethora of things mm -hmm. to do, places to go, who's what's happening, who's hot, who's not, whatever. Um, so that's that's really dope. And, and we're trying to do that on a very small scale. Small so, scale. you know, not just all of Raleigh, but make it more zip code specific and community specific yeah. so that, you know, it really can encourage that engagement. Yeah, that community connection. mapping is like super important when it comes to that. Yeah. yeah. I need to do more of that myself, more community mapping, mapping and really kind of segment certain things mm -hmm. um, a certain way that can then help other business owners, other artists, yeah. things of that nature. So I'll take a page out of that book and, and kind of uh, get to some things. Um, so that's, that's good. We've, that's been a, a lot of good information and hopefully people will be able to take some nuggets, some of the yeah. things you said and some of the perspectives and be able to use that. Um, Hopefully, you know, maybe somebody needs some commercial yeah. property well, or just reach out. Let me know. I'm happy to help. We have a whole team of people that are ready to help buyers, agents, listing agents, commercial cool. property management. We can help all so, of that. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> we are ready. Cool beans. So in, in opening, I asked you, who do you think you are? And so now as we close, I'm going to ask you, who do you think you will be? Ooh, hopefully still the same, mm. you know? I think that, um, you know, just grow, but never change who I am at the core of who I am, if that makes sense. It does. It does. So, yeah, but always growing. Right. But I feel 
feel like I'm keeping your core values yes, yeah. in place because you, you like what they it took are. Took me long enough to figure out what they were and kind of really how to put them in place and and help them work for me, not against me. That's dope. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I appreciate um, you having me. This is been interesting and exciting yeah it's been dope i'm glad we got to meet and chop it up then and then we got to chop it up just now and i'm pretty sure we'll see each other around and, and maybe possibly have uh have irl in the metaverse yes and definitely. um and make some business deals well, together you know who to call if you want to buy anything in right in <laughs> right exactly <laughs> we'll um, figure it out we will yes because if there's nothing else that i that i know that i do is figure things out um, so yeah, it'll be dope and um, definitely, like I said, good to connect. And if you need anything that I can help with, I don't know yeah. what it is, but just let me know. And if it's if I don't know, if I can't do it, right. hopefully I know somebody who who can. Yeah. Um, Likewise, if you need space for your events. Cool, cool. Yeah, we can definitely uh, have some conversations about some stuff down the line, and, and we'll go from there. Hopefully, maybe I'll be even getting a commercial space, yeah. buying some That'd property awesome. down the line, and have a, a whole event space built. That'd be dope. Would be. That'd be dope. That'd be super cool. Yeah, now you got my mind going again. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, I have not figured out, and I say this like at the end of all the episodes, I want to like figure out something to say, right? Something like deep at the end of the episodes, but I haven't figured it out yet. So, that's okay. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>